Lens blur has two purposes in life. One is to accurately recreate what happens with a real camera when there's bright, out-of-focus objects in the scene. What happens is those objects aren't just fuzzy little details in the background. The iris and the shutter shape of that iris affects the pattern of the blurred objects in the background, particularly bright objects. Lens blur recreates that effect, particularly useful if you have a synthetic shot that you want to make look like it was shot in a real camera. The second thing that lens blur is very good for is being a better compound blur. You can point it at another blur map. It might be a 3D depth map. It may be something very fanciful like a fun pattern. And it will create a smoother blur pattern based on that map than compound blur will. Let's go ahead and see both of those applications in action. Here is a fanciful image of a night sky that was rendered in a 3D program. Let's say that we want to make it look a little bit more like it was shot with a real camera and play around with these little specular highlights, these stars that are in the sky. I'll select my layer and apply Effect, Blur and Sharpen, Lens Blur. Now initially it looks just like a blur effect, and you can increase the iris radius to increase the amount of blur. Higher value, much softer blur. Lower value, a little bit more detail back. Well, the real fun happens when you start playing around with the specular brightness and specular threshold parameters. These two work in concert with each other, so you need to adjust them both. I'll increase my specular brightness, then I'll decrease my specular threshold. That sets what luminance values are going to get artificially brightened. You'll see a little bit of brightening happen in my stars there. I'll go ahead and increase the specular brightness, really make those stars pop, decrease the threshold, and make more of the stars emerge. And as I do so, you can start to see that there's an interesting pattern going on to these stars. I'll increase the iris radius to increase the size of that blur, and now you see a lovely hexagon shape. Looks more like a normal iris in a camera actually would look if it shot this scene. Now that we're actually seeing the effects of lens blur, let's have some more fun. Iris shape determines the shape of these specular highlights. Hexagon's the default, but you can go to things such as triangle to get triangular shapes, squares, and even something like an octagon. But let's go ahead and lock it down to square for now, because that makes it easier to see what some of these other parameters do. Iris rotation basically says, how is that iris, this blade pattern, oriented? I'll start to increase it. You'll see that my squares will start to rotate around a little bit. If I bring them back to 45 degrees, you'll see now that I've got squares oriented in the same dimensions as my comp, not as diamonds. And you can set that to any value that you want. You can even animate the parameter to create something very fanciful. Iris blade curvature says how perfect are those blades. As I increase it, you'll see the pattern in those squares start to bloom out a little bit. So rather than being a perfect square, they're sort of a rounded square. If I keep increasing it, I'll end up with something that's much more just like a spot or a dot, as opposed to a very sharp-edged square iris. So now you get to see the real power of lens blur. It can create some really fun specular shapes. And again, I can play with my specular threshold to determine just how many of these stars in that star field are going to get this treatment, and set the brightness to decide how much I want to pump them up. Reduce this down a little bit, get a little bit more of a fun scene. That's nice. Now you might have noticed that underneath the iris and specular parameters, there's some additional noise parameters. Quite often, you will be using this effect with night scenes, and both film and video cameras have some difficulty with dark scenes. You'll see some noise introduced into these darker areas. Well, Lens Blur has the ability to go ahead and add noise into your scene. Add a little bit here, and you start to see some graining appear. I'll crank it up just so it's very obvious. You have a choice between different types of noise, whether it's just grayscale noise or color noise, and what type of noise distribution that you get. Gaussian is being a lot more obvious. I'll set this down to zero for now, but it's another tool you can use to make synthetic scenes look like they were actually shot with a real camera. Well, here I took a 3D scene and made it look more like it was shot with an actual camera, but you can also use lens blur to enhance real scenes. I'm gonna open up the second composition here. There's some beautiful water shots. I've got little specular highlights happening with the water over here. 
As I jump down to the end, you'll see I've got some interesting things happen with the waves at the very end of the shot. I'll go back to the beginning for now. Let's say that we want those specular highlights to just pop even more, to be far more fanciful and hyper real. I'll select my footage and go Effect, Lens Blur. Initially, I have just a blurred image. I'll repeat the edge pixels to go ahead and fill out the frame. Let's play with specular brightness and specular threshold. I'll increase the brightness to some beginning value and start to reduce the threshold until I see these little highlights in the water start to really pop. I can start to either really increase my effect, really create a burned out look, or go down to something more subtle. And I might even reduce the iris radius at this point just to create little highlights like that rather than the big blown out highlights. Original footage, treated footage. It's kind of fun. I'll move later in the scene where I've got some water happening here, these little waves. I can go ahead and play around with specular brightness and specular threshold to really make those kick up as well if I wanted to go for a really fanciful look. In the next movie, I'll show how you can blur just the highlights and keep the rest of the scene sharp.